Hello, my name is Pascal Achunine. I am the executive director of Health Emergency Initiative and uh, by God's grace, the founder. I have, um, I have a, a postgraduate degree in business administration from Federal University of Technology where I, and prior to then I studied public administration in Abia State University. And uh, I have been in the financial services sector for the last uh, two and a half decades. Uh, but I'm here to talk about uh, making a difference, uh, the HEI story. And um, it has uh, been my desire over time to make a little difference. And uh, maybe in the space where I operate, I have also had a couple of opportunities that makes me to feel that I am insulated from the problems of the society. But it's only for a while because it could come, it could turn around negatively. So I am here to uh, share with us the HI experience that um, sometime in 2008 um, I had occasion to go to a public hospital after a, a, a very testimony, sweet testimonial that my wife uh, had baby, a baby girl safely, and I felt okay. Let me go to a. a public hospital where someone had given birth and had a, um, a, a mother and child had not been allowed to go home on account of not paying their bills and it happened to be an island maternity. I came, had the contact communication with the MD, medical director and um, the little I brought, um, they were able to, they were touched and they said they could give right out the balance of the bill. Health Emergency Initiative um, came as a result of uh, that experience and um, there was this burning desire, if you could make a difference in the life of that single person, why not stretch it further? And someday I just sat and uh, the inspiration came to write down the M's and objectives and I used an old diary, wrote it down. The diary is still there as a, in the archives today and that was um, put down in sometime in May 2008, but I was running away from bringing it to the public domain because I had been involved in charity. My wife and I embark on food kitchen in Makoko area. We in Bariga area also in the last, uh, for several years, we've been going to support people, widows with food stuff, encourage them, share the word of God with them, pray with them. But I felt that could suffice, especially I have my own family and all that thing. But the desire remained there, that inspiration kept coming until 2015, October 24th, for, to be specific, HEI um, started by writing those M's and objectives. We are shared with like minded friends, and eventually at 113A Mainland Way. Uh, Mrs. Uh, one of us, Mrs. Okolo, offered her place, a guest house that I had sitting capacity of 60 people for us to do the first meeting. And then the journey began. From there, from uh, doing it pro bono by among us, going to hospitals. The hospitals were originally hesitant. Eventually, they saw consistency and credibility in the way we were engaging with that giving a picture that we are hostile or exposing the gaps and they in open their doors and then was, gradually we started setting up structures had a one-man team and eventually we have a functional team so that is at uh, the um, takeoff point of health emergency initiative and uh, today we have gone beyond impacting the lives of indigent people in those hospitals we have ex expanded to bringing other stakeholders okay um, the focal areas of HEI um, do are uh, providing succor to indigent patients in public hospitals, especially such services that would have been rendered at primary healthcare level for common diseases like malaria, typhoid, di um, diarrhea, uh, pneumonia that afflict the, the very poor that most times we think those diseases do not take lives but sadly they are they start small and eventually get uncontrollable and take lives so where people die because of 20,000 naira cases and below 
from blood transfusion to drip, as they use the, the common language drip, to basic common infections we have been and then of course sepsis and malnutrition if you check our records that constitutes the largest number of beneficiaries that is on uh, medical intervention but uh, also we have expanded in the last two and a half years nearly three years now having involved federal road safety commission uh, frsc and um, lasambos lagos state ambulance service lasema and uh, other emergency agencies. So we put, had put in place an MOU signed by these uh, stakeholders ensuring that in the event accident happens, inevitably accident happens, and there is no post-crash, no functional post-crash care that addresses the needs of uh, citizens when uh, this happens. So what we have done is signed a MOU with this agencies and, uh, and stakeholders in such that when accidents happen and the victims are taken to 11 um, recognized hospitals, those that have capacity to handle this, we're able to provide that initial 20,000 to stand as nest of kin for those victims until their relations or the organizations or their companies or their churches are contacted. So that way more lives are saved. and. Um, as you are aware, there have been this publication by the by WHO that accident is the biggest killer of young people. My name is Hygiene Somiji. I'm the sector commander for Federal Safety Corps Lagos. Well, I, I came, I got to know HI through Mr. Patrick and uh, Pascal. And um, I think I was just in the office one day and he came in and he uh, was explaining the whole concept of uh, the HI to me. And um, it was all about uh, between the needs of indigent patients and um, people that have really fall within that line mostly as it relates to our job when we carry crash victims to hospitals and you discover that nobody to I mean take care of the victim hereafter and some of them will get treated and cannot even leave the hospital because nobody has paid their bills and things like that and then um, I, I saw the passion in him in ensuring that um, this category of people do not really um, suffer to death or suffer the kind of hardship they are going through because of uh, little, little funds, as little as uh, 20,000, 10,000, somebody will be in the hospital. And um, we've had cases where uh, even some hospital will tell you they are not going to touch the patient or see even somebody buy his card and do all those things. And, then, and I saw what uh, the uh, concept of HI is in terms of coming as a bridging gap in all this. And also we go to some general hospitals or even community health centers where for prescriptions of 1,015, the woman cannot afford it and the child is dying of malaria treatment uh, of malaria and um, they can't even afford bills as little as under five thousand naira. so uh, but the one that caught my attention most is actually how it relates to crash victims that we do drop at the hospitals and um, i got interested and um, i think i said okay i personally i even enrolled myself as a member of the uh, HI family so that I can also contribute my own um, quota and um, subsequently um, uh, we came up with a memorandum of understanding of how FRSC and HI can actually uh, work together on a project we call non -shoot -I. Um we, we, we have um, um, leveraged on that relationship to uh, gain some mileage uh, uh, on their parts they when they started their uh, training um, volunteers our personnels um, as first as first responders some of our personnel have benefited from that um, training and we have uh, joined them in the awareness campaign of also raising the awareness of what the NGO really stands for uh, with a view to um, wooing others to really voluntarily join and see how we can all um, 
I mean, meet the needs of indigent patients within Lagos State, um, and ensure that um, for minor, minor cases, uh, people don't um, lose their life where it ought not to. I mean, some of us have so much that um, we even um, go abroad for any little headache. But we have people here who cannot afford to even pay general hospital bills for malaria, ordinary malaria. Um, we have crash victims that um, at times um, I have had cost to pay for card before they could attend to the person. And also the person is in a hospital. Hospital is saying as uh, somebody deposits 5,000 they cannot treat so nobody to do anything because so we we have uh, collaborated in raising that awareness so that more people can really join this initiative and ensure that uh, together we save um, lives you know of uh, crash victims and of course non-crash victims who for one financial uh, for financial incapacitation are uh, uh, we should not allow them to suffer to, you know, to, to death. And um, I am happy with what they have been doing in, in, in recent time. I was not able to join in the last um, awareness work they did because I was not around. But then again, I've been also tracking their yeah, activities in, in recent times to be sure that we are still on track. And I think they are still on track. I think I should use this opportunity to appeal to um, um, any good-spirited Nigerians. This is, uh, I know what the issues are here. Uh, most NGOs we've had in this country, everybody is focusing on HIV and AIDS, where the international donors are bringing in money. Well, this is something I see local content in it. We should be able to have uh, an NGO like this that is addressing what is real to us. And to me here, what is real is, look, um, crashes occurring daily. People go to hospitals. They cannot even buy card. In the first case, one particular case about crash victims is that you cannot get to know the relatives then. At times, some people will say, for how many days you have not been able to know where they are from, where they are going. So I want to appeal to Nigerians and uh, Lagosians in particular for us to, um, as God has given us the grace, we should really uh, identify with what HI is um, doing. There are a lot of indigent patients there who, uh, who need help. And I think everything God has given us is not just for us. It's for us to use it to serve Him. And to serve Him is the people you see. God, you can see. But the scripture made us to see that whatever you have done to the least of these ones, He said you have done it unto me. So I think it's, it's one thing, area that I really want people to look at. Each time I'm watching um, AIT News Hour, uh, you see they put somebody, heart surgery, kidney this, kidney this. I want to see a situation if we can all grow in HEI such that such is, and you then look at it, you say, the person needs two million naira. The person needs six million naira. There are people that spend two million naira in clubs in Lagos State. So I think these are areas we should all join hands in this service to humanity so that we can all save um lives nobody is going to carry anything out of this world everything we have is going to end here so i think we should use what god has given us to serve humanity and to serve god so i encourage you out there listening to me if you are moved please join a uh, hei uh, i joined and i'm working with them too as i know the sector commander Lagos, as in my organization in Road Safety in Lagos, um, they are my stakeholders. And together, I know 
um, we can all make a difference. My name is Gift Julius. I'm from Abia State. I live at um, Aja Elaja Street, number five, White House Street. Well, it all happened on the 15th of July. Well, I was not at home. My kids and their dad was at home. Me, I was at work. So, around to five, I had a call that my house was on fire. So, I had to call the dad. I asked the dad that, where are you? And they said the house, our house is on fire. They said I want to get something at the bus stop. So I told him that I should go back. That somebody called and said the house is on fire. So for him getting there, the house, my children was inside. The house was burned. The children too. So my mom, I don't know how come, because me I was still at work. So my mom and my husband are the one that took them to. They took them to Doreen Hospital, they now referred them to Lutz. So, me, I was at home, I've already gotten home, but I could not make it because the, it was late at night. And my mom called me that I should go back, that there is hold up, I will not make it, that I should go to my own parents' place to go and stay for that night. Then in the morning, I can start coming over. So, on their way going, I've been calling, I've been calling. So when they get to loot, I lost the third one. So the many three of them were receiving treatment along the line due to money, because they said the little one had to go for ICU, which we are supposed to pay two fifty, and we don't have it that very moment. So we try calling if we were going to get the cheaper one outside. But we we're not able to get cheaper one outside, so they gave them oxygen, stuff like that, sure, but it didn't work very well. I lost the three of them in the process. So, this money was the one that we'll be fighting to keep alive. Then, some ladies came in, two ladies, they said they're from social worker. Whatever. So they are the one that came, asked some questions. So we told them everything. Then the next day on the 16th, that is when HEI people, Mr. Roland, came in. So from there, he took some responsibility from there, started helping us in buying drugs and everything. Then they said we have to take. The one that is, uh, that is testimony to children's ward. That is how we're able to move testimony to children's ward. HEI people has been helping throughout the treatment over there. Then, thank God, testimony is, I would say, is well, is strong, but the pain and injury are still on his body which you can see him this is testimony Julius <clears throat> this is the face then well, this is it but I can't show the handle the leg we are still some part that we are still treating treating on he was in his, uh, he was admitted in the hospital for a good three months. But so far so good. He's doing well, he's okay. And we've been discharged, we are at home now. We've been discharged. That is on the twenty fourth. So we've been discharged, we are home. And he's doing well. I just want to say thank you to H E I people for their support for everything they did for me and my son. HEI was the one that took over the bills, paid everything for us, assisted us. We are really, really grateful for what they did to us. Just want to say thank you and God bless you all. What do we do in HEI? Are you aware that most of the activities that happen in the non-for-profit space are essentially advocacy-driven? 
HEI stands out as an organization that takes real action. And those actions can be situated in the following areas. Number one is uh, medical relief. Over, there is a report we can verify that over 96 million Nigerians live, currently live in extreme poverty. So at the time we began, if the best was that Nigeria didn't have a better record, more than 70 million were living in extreme poverty. And it has implications for their in their lives. We are aware also there are many gaps in the primary health care system that issues of malaria, typhoid, and other common diseases are taken to tertiary health, cent um, health institutions. So that gap has resulted in lives being lost to cases of 20,000, 10,000, 5,000 as the case may be. So we moved and over time we started relating with the social workers because the social workers are the ones that advocate for indigent patients. So they bring records of those cases. At the beginning, they are, they, most of them were hesitant because they didn't want to let out information. But when they saw that we are credible, we are consistent, so we were the ones they would always, the organization they, they would always reach out to. So what do have we done? If you look at our records, the statistics shows that one of the children's hospital in Lagos has the highest number of beneficiaries, sepsis, malnutrition, um, malaria, typhoid, and um, um, other common diseases, including uh, cholera. So this and diarrhea, these are cases that sometimes a child is dying because of 3,000 naira and HEI recognize that rather than be indifferent, yes, we may not do those cases of 3 million of cancer, um, diabetes, that may not even be extinguished with the 3 million. It may require going to India. But we recognize that our cases are end to end. So we start a case with 10,000 naira. We know that 10,000 naira will ensure that that family, that child, that man or woman goes on. A case requires blood transfusion, oxygen, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. Our intervention ensures that that case, a, a, a good result, a conclusive result comes out of it. So the outcome is, which of our analysis you see, outcome, the patient was successfully treated and taken home. So cases that are referred to us, the success rate is over 80 to 90 percent because we understand where that pain is and we work with. So uh, that is as it relates to medical relief. Okay, we as an organization, Health Emergency Initiative, we are meant to visit hospitals, assist vulnerable patients, indigent patients, those who cannot access medical health care, proper medical health care in terms of providing for drugs and blood transfusions. We cannot do it alone, so we partner with government hospitals like the social workers and the medical directors because they know more about all those, they have more information about the patient. So once they, because this is how we get our interventions, our details from our patient, the doctors send details to the social workers that social so patient cannot I said, just like the case we have from one of our beneficiaries, that they cannot get these drugs for operation. So the social worker now called on Earth Emergency Initiative for intervention. This is how we do operate because we are trying to build accountability and our transparency. So we don't want to do a process whereby we facilitate and we end it all. So by partnering with government hospitals and social workers, we are able to do such. And apart from that, for the past three years, we have been able to assist a lot of patients. You know, sometimes you look at some patients that you believe, oh, they have it all to take care of themselves. But once you go deep into their cases, you realize that they cannot or they might, they might have exhausted a lot of their finances, their money, and okay, they need some other assistance. And where would they get this assistance for? Yes, government are trying their best, but also due to what is happening in our society, maybe an email that will cost 50 or 60,000 naira and the patient could only afford maybe 10 or 5,000 naira. So where would they get the orders from? So that is where Health Emergency Initiative come on board to assist. Because we don't want a situation whereby a patient will be neglected because he or she cannot afford a drug worth 5 or 10,000 naira or a surgical operation 
that at least at most 30 or 40,000 40, can cover. So this is what HCR is trying to cover up on. My name is Esther Obiwa. Doing business, selling Indomie, selling food, rice, jollof rice and egg and yam. My picking, when they play for street, they play ball. They come fall for that. Come, come, they cook for kitchen. Come with me, mommy, my leg. What? What's it do for leg? Ah, I won't do. I'll stay when they won't. Same for inside gota. I look the leg, the leg start to bleed. I can't go to hospital. I treat the leg, I stitch the leg. Suddenly, they go charge that money. Come shout my chest, my chest, not my chest. Everything is for chest. I say, more they go church. Go to church, they pray for them. I say, we church, they pray for them. We shall see again. Yeah, I just can't go back. I say, I can't go to church. I can't put that for body. I go put that for body. Yeah, I do. You single play. After you don't put that for body, finish. You single play again. I say, go play. Night, we shouldn't enter. I say, sleep. I say, sleep that night. For money. I wake up. My school don't close. I wake up. I say, Joe, yeah. I'm not prepared for lesson. Your school don't. Close. I know go less. I never come in. No be stand up. In order to join up, they don't stand up. In no be stand up. In sit down for bed. You know that stand up now. No be stand up. I say carry on. Carry on. In no be stand. So they jerk. Start to they stretch. I say, Joe, what's in me this one? Stand up. In no be talk. In no be talk. Anything said. Just they look at me. I say, ah. What's in happen? Waka. In no be waka. I say, in the fall down. I call my neighbour there. I never see this kind thing. No. I say, I convulsion. I get convulsion. My son. I lose and they go back. I don't see any improvement. It seems to be worse. I said, ah, my name is my name on Facebook. I said, this one is Tatano, this one is Biona Rita. So you have Tatano say again. Ah, oh, yeah, come on, go General Hospital. So I take it on bike, which General Hospital. We wish just more go Lagos Island. I said, I don't know if you go Lagos Island. I say that stress is too much for me. So one of the doctors there can say, okay, me then go look at that space there for upstairs. I switch upstairs, space day. Because I collect emergency card for the go answer me. I collect emergency card. So they answer me. From there, I started to buy drugs. They buy small, small. That was our money wish to buy. We buy our money wish go hold our break. So from the blah, you're now introduce me to HCI. So then I come, they look the boy. Boy, this thing is serious. Is this serious like I said? But when they ask me question, now nah, mommy, I manage this boy to wound. I manage. They say, ah, I don't understand. I don't fit on a long story. They say, ah, this thing is too much. I say, okay. I don't get much money to buy drugs. I be like, I they broke. Even food to eat, self, nothing, nothing. So I say, okay, they will help me for some item. Then I have me to pharmacy. We go pharmacy. We go pharmacy. They say, oh yeah, the medicine. How much? The clear the receipt, the car and go there, they buy. I pay twelve thousand plus. The money my wrote down before four thousand, they cleared it for me. So I really appreciate them. They tried a lot. God will continue to bless them. The boy there with me. I won't show the leg. Thank God the leg don't go. Like to say Jonathan. And the leg be this so. I don't say the leg don't go now, be this. Th thank you to Eshi Hai. God, be, God bless you people for me in Jesus' name. We have uh, expanded some of the other things we do to first responders. So, uh, what I just spoke about accident, but there's much more that in especially a place like Lagos and other locations even on the highway the emergency agencies may not be on ground so you may be a driver you may be a vulcanizer you may be a company executive or anyone but you see an accident situation you see an emergency situation whether it's at home or on the road you have the skill set to provide cpr first aid and other sk uh, skills required to stabilize and resuscitate such a person until they are moved to the um, hospitals. The essence is to take away this culture. We want to drive a cultural change, behavioral change, such that those cases where we are taking pictures or you see people taking pictures and videos in uh, incident situations or emergency situations, that and of course the, everybody is already to post it on social media. If you have the skill set and that is what HR is doing, 
that narrative will change it will save more lives and it will be instituted in as a national culture and practice for us that when there are emergencies people know what to do as opposed to taking pictures and videos that's part of also what to do okay so talking about the first responders training the reason why we came up with the first responders training is because we want to change the narrative of people uh, who are at the scene of an accident instead of just taking pictures you know and posting on social media which by itself is not a bad thing because sometimes you know uh, of emergency organizations pick it up on social media and respond but we want a situation where at the scene of that emergency between when the accident or whatever emergency happens between say five one to five minutes there is someone there at the scene of the accident responding to that emergency that's why we came up with the first responders training now what does it entail it entails um, people being taught how to administer first aid at the scene of an emergency how to administer cpr and not just for accidents alone you have a situation where maybe you're at the pool with the kids or you know by yourself and someone is drowning you know what to do or in cases of people who have asthma attacks you also know what to do or in cases of a fire incident you also know what to do now Aside from that, we also inculcated what is called the crowd control. The reason for the crowd control is because, aside from administering your first aid, you also want to be able to make people stay away from the victim or victims at the scene of an emergency. Because when you have a lot of people at that scene, you might not be able to know what to do at the moment or at the exact time. So you want to, we are uh, adding that crowd control to it such that when you get to the scene, the first thing you want to do is to be able to know what to do with the crowd gathering at that scene. So once you do that, you can then administer your um, first aid, CPR, as the case may be. Now at the end of the training, you'll be certified by the America Heart Association. That certification lasts you for two years. And we expect that after that you recertify after two years. And the process of the training is actually very rigorous. There is nobody that will take that training and come back the same. You want to save lives. You will always want to save life. It will, in fact, it will be as if you want to. You expect an accident to be somewhere so that you help save the save the life of the, you know, victims. Because uh, the other day before I got my certification. It was a rainy day, heavy, the rain was very heavy that day. And I was on um, Ikorodu Road, there was an accident. I'm like, oh gosh, I wish I had my certificate because I didn't want a situation where maybe I'm trying to help save this person's life. And then police comes up and say, oh, you have killed this person. Maybe as at the time I got there, the person was already dead. I was just trying to help. So because I didn't have my um, ID card at that time, I didn't bother because it hurt me because I knew that I could help but because I didn't have my ID card I don't want any situation where because we don't have good Samaritan laws in Nigeria if we had good Samaritan laws in Nigeria it would have been another you know it would have been easier but I didn't have my ID card so I moved on and there's there's been a lot of cases like that where people see emergencies and they just walk away they want to help but they can't because first of all maybe they are not certified or yes they are certified but they are scared that they'll be harassed by the police and that is the reason why police nigerian police is part of the stakeholders we have involved in this first responders training so that they, they are aware that there are people being trained by health emergency initiative to be certified first responders so when incident happens like that and they show their id card they are aware that these people are trained by you know the um, health emergency initiative at the end of the day, what we want to achieve is that more lives are saved and our project Non Should Die that covers for vulnerable people, accident victims, will reduce because we have a lot of cases of Non Should Die. It's better to do a preventive course than to do more curative because what we do with Non Should Die is more curative than preventive. So now we want to change the narrative from preventive, sorry, from curative to preventive. Preventive. That way we are able to save money, we save more lives, we empower a lot of people because after the training, you can actually go a step further and become a paramedic. And we, we work hand in hand with the FRSC, the LASAMBOS, LASEMA, 
Ministry of Health, Lagos State Ministry of Health, and most of all the general hospitals in Lagos. So, please, if you are interested in becoming a lifesaver, join ATI today and let's save lives together. Thank you. Long Should Die is um, a slogan invented by HEI and other stakeholders, including Federal Road Safety Commission. The, it came as a result of when Federal Road Safety Commission and Lassambos and Lassema and the host, uh, some of the emergency agencies had that health emergency initiative has been supporting indigent patients and has a credible structure that ensures consistent intervention whenever we are called upon. They reached out to us and we had a meeting, signed a MOU, a MOU including National Orthopedic Ibobi, a MOU including FMC Botemeta, a MOU a required uh, a, a, with all the agencies and the, even up to the point that Lagos State Ministry of Health wrote to their hospitals, courtesy of this non should die, that they should work with Health Emergency Initiative and send monthly report to the Permanent Secretary. That's how structured that's how effective it has been and what does none should die speak about when an accident happens as opposed to the old system where the victims are picked by these emergency agencies and they get to some of the hospitals and they say there is no bed space or they are hesitant to attend to them because of course they have limited resources so they need to who will fund it they Relations are not there. The organization that the person works with is not, uh, and, um, those organizations are not there. So, what has happened is that, because of the MOU, within 24 hours, any of the victims taken to those hospitals will be stabilized and resuscitated. Again, the language is stabilized and resuscitated because accident has a, there is what is called the golden hour rule in accident situations. When an accident happens, in the first five hours, in the first 10 hours, if help does not come, there is 80% chances of the victim dying. So what HEI does is to stand in the gap as nest of kin to those accident victims by providing uh, in the short run a sum of 20,000 Naira to ensure that the victims are stabilized and that way, we have recorded over 80% success rate because those the victims have received succor. It could be blood transfusion, it could be oxygen, it could be drip um, that they need at that time. But the comfort that HEI will pay 20,000 by the hospitals ensures that they open their doors and they attend. And that's also why we documented it. We had to get MOU signed. So that's what uh, um, Non Should Die is. We realized, we realized in Nigeria, some time passed, I believe we are growing gradually now. When accidents occur, or the scene of accidents, you see individuals all pass by. They snap and they instantly they upload on Facebook to update their status. But what HR is trying to do, instead of what, updating your status with victims on the road or accident victims, why don't you what, call like Sambos or FRX with their emergency number? We have the Lagos to the 767, the 112, and the 124 FRXC. You can what, easily call them up that such an incident has happened. And with the kind of partnership we are building with government for status like the Nigeria Police, the LASMA, and Federal Road Safety, as a passerby, you can easily what, pick an accident victim to the hospital, any of the government hospital. You don't need to know anybody. They know in government hospital, they will ask you who will stand as the next of king, who will pay for the drugs. HEI, we are known as well, the next of king for all beneficiaries. So just take a patient or the accident victim to any of the government hospitals and say, okay, I'm a stranger and I don't know this kind of this person, but I have no much details about him. But I believe your partnership with what HEI or Health Emergency Initiative can really what, cover these expenses because we have sent MOU to government hospitals, I mean to the MDs and the social worker. So once you mention Health Emergency Initiative, in any government hospitals, mostly through the social worker, you will be accommodated on. So our mission is just to save life and ensure that indigent patients have access to good quality healthcare facility. Other beneficiaries who have also been in the HEI ecosystem includes those in prison. We may not think that uh, we, we, most of us think that there is a very perfect system that suits their needs medically, but they have clinics that most times require um, 
certain resources, certain consumables to function, operate effectively. So, for instance, we got Green Life Pharmaceutical to provide drugs worth about 700,000 naira for Kirikiri prison. But in addition, some of the inmates um, get ill with some of these common diseases and they, the clinics don't, don't have capacity to handle. So from Ajero Mijira Hospital and other hospitals, we will take care of them. They are also Nigerians. Some of them are even over 60 percent are awaiting trials. So that's also to give them a voice. Last year, December, Ibamu, I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital. I was in hospital. I was in the hospital. I was so, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to operation. So, good am so long. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to bi ba la madise christmas won pe hospital won pe teku won ko saye won pe eh masi won ko saye doctor wa ni ngo to ma se fun wa ni sin ni pe ngba ti ati rowo won ko ma fun wa ni ogun kan so a je ki o le dro ko fi di eyin odun that is 24, 25, 26, 27. We I are not my school. So we are not my school. 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 We are not my what what my operation. I want doctor to be my bonnet. This is this is this is this this is this is so I am not a bad one. I am not a easy case. Shagun. I am not a okay. Nisi. I am a doctor. I am a shiu. I am a maruki. I am a So I am a man. 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 I I'm <laughs> <laughs> I think the best way to actually introduce Project 1 Million of Health Emergency Initiative is as I have been, since this conversation started, we have done over um, this is episode, you must have seen in our records, in some of our publications, that we have supported, assisted, and by God's grace, saved the lives of over 500 people. You'll be wondering, how, how are you able to do this for the last, in the last four years, consistently? We are, we are familiar that when there is um, the, during uh, festive period, people go to the hospital to visit once a year, twice a year. But this is the only organization that consistently stands in the gap for the poor and for uh, vulnerable people. So, one, 
if you're listening to us you could be coming back from a nightclub you could be driving peacefully and a car some assaults i have seen a case where someone was driving taking a child to school and the car some assaulted from the opposite direction and ran into the lane and there was a barricade and the only son died in that episode the mother was so injured that she was flown to south africa and she has never been the same again so don't be indifferent when you see an organization like hti reaching out to you so what does project one million means project one million means that we HEI is speaking and reaching out to Nigerians and people outside Nigeria, to Nigerians and diaspora and any corner of the earth that we should have at least 1 million people contributing minimum of 500, 1,000 naira, 5,000 naira in a year. If you do 5,000 naira in a year, that means that HEI will have capacity to ensure this place to across all the length and breadth of Nigeria that will ensure that when more accident cases uh, happen that HEI can respond, indigent cases are brought, we will even put in place more proactive steps to ensure that more lives are saved. Do we really value life? If you value life, you must be very eager to be part of Project 1 million. And we have made simplify the process because you will be wondering, ah, in this number of years, how many people are making this possible? Maybe we are getting grant from government. No, we have, this is coming from kind-hearted Nigerians, including a widow who has in the last 30 months co contributed 2,500 every month. But there is a, now that more people are getting involved, more, people, more cases are happening and is, they are being referred to HEI, AO has need to be on deck. And we are complimenting the government. We are not in any way competing. We are not in any way. Government is doing so much. But even in advanced countries, there is a limit to what the government can do. So we have set, put in motion or many things that a, a lot of programs initiatives that will make it possible for even if you're flying a car by the roadside even if you're a vulcanizer even if you're a conductor even if you are an agent of a bank you can transfer to hei account we also have ussd code that makes it possible that even if you don't have a white a smartphone you can use your normal phone to make transfer at no charge to you so it is a call to action HEI has also put in place corporate governance. We have board of trustees. There's a chairman. The chairman board of trustees became a medical doctor in 1976. So we have um, trained in the UK as a gynecologist. So we have corporate governance that ensures strong accounting and auditing processes. I am Dr. Ndion Wekusi, the chairman of uh, Health Emergency Initiative. I have a background in obstetrics and gynecology. It is a big pleasure to talk about Health Emergency Initiative today. The NGO was established to serve the need of underprivileged people who cannot look after themselves. And it has a byline of that none should die. So HEI is that none should die who can be cured but for lack of money. That is the key statement about HEI. It therefore covers a wide range of activities. But let us start by, uh, by saying that HEI is an organization that aims to provide health care for people who cannot afford it, since in Nigeria, there are very few opportunities for such people to get care and remain alive. For just as little as uh, 2,000 Naira, HEI has saved lives. And so it is important to recognize that we can do something beyond what government is providing for the low segment of society. Health care provision is a major responsibility of government. However, the society also can support government to do this. In a country like Nigeria, where government does not provide health care for people, the society has a responsibility because society is about the community. It is about the people who live in the society. Society has a responsibility to make adjustments and then provide for the most uh, underprivileged people in that community. And so HEI was set up with this major vision 
to provide health care for those who would otherwise die for as low as 1,000 and as low as 20,000 Naira. Therefore, HEI, since inception, has intervened and saved lives of more than 300 people who would otherwise have died. And every day, HEI is expanding in its reach uh, and uh, touching lives. It is important to also emphasize that all Nigerians can become members of HEI. For 500 Naira a month, HEI will enroll you and you will become a major lifesaver in Nigeria and be able to contribute to this wonderful work that HEI does. It is remarkable that HEI has saved lives of young children for as little as 3,000 500 Naira for the child who had tetanus and for the child who, had, who survived from burns that killed his siblings, three, three of his siblings, HEI also intervened and saved his life. It is also important at this juncture to, I, I will keep emphasizing this throughout this opportunity to talk to you, the people of Nigeria, that all of us can join HEI just for 500 Naira a month. HEI has also in its short time uh, of activity expanded beyond regular or emergency illnesses to develop also uh, active, uh, contact with uh, hospitals, special, specialist hospitals to deliver services to accident victims. And this service is also a major lifesaver. At the point of incidents, there may be nobody to stand in the gap. HEI stands in the gap of people who, have, who are victims of road traffic accidents or any other type of accident, and uh, they will go to hospitals, uh, associated hospitals, and they will get emergency care without payment or without their relations being around because most of the time relations are not around at the time that you have an accident. So that is another important aspect of the work of HEI. Most importantly, it's the general public becoming part of HEI because sustainability is based on the volume of participants uh, of membership. And therefore, my duty as chairman really is more to call on all Nigerians to learn about HEI, change their views about the helplessness in Nigerian society by becoming more active in trying to find ways of our helping ourselves while waiting on government to do the best it can. Uh, this is not an opportunity to uh, criticize government. This is an opportunity to mobilize Nigerians for HAI so that we can save lives. These lives we save could be the people who would contribute tremendously in special ways in uh, building a great country of Nigeria that will be the future uh, country of joy and hope and wealth and influence in the world. You know, many countries that are great today, we are very poor and we are very disorganized before. And uh, like, I don't want to cite them, their names, but they're, they're all that would be well recorded in history. Indeed, every country that is big today has had difficult times. And so I will conclude by saying that all Nigerians should target to within the next one year to become members of HEI. HEI operates a very high quality level of management uh, and there is due diligence in everything that HEI does. HEI accounts are audited regularly and the, the management of HEI is of the highest international order and international organizations are beginning to notice HEI also and 
are supporting HEI. And uh, it is important that we as Nigerians should also wake up to the need to be our brothers and sisters keepers. And this is my call as chairman for every Nigeria to join HEI. Join HEI, HEI that none should die. John HEI that people can be saved for just 2,000 Naira, 3,000 Naira. I thank you. So each of us, even, uh, even if you have not been part of HEI, you can go to our website, you'll see our audited accounts in the last three years, and you can also ask questions about the funds you donated. How have HEI, has HEI used it? That also gave a, an organization like Pricewaterhouse comfort to give HEI 1 million naira two years ago after doing due diligence on HEI. So if you're a corporate organization listening to this, is a time for you to respond because HEI has also gone further to secure um, a certification from Federal Inland Revenue Service. We have their approval to granting HEI tax exemption certificate or status. So those are processes and systems HEI have put in place to ensure that these projects and programs are sustainable. And I am talking to someone this hour. If because you've been looking for a credible organization to partner with before now, now HEI is available to work with you in impacting our society and changing the narrative of our nation. Thank you.